This is the Six Man Show, an Orlando Magic podcast, with your hosts, Luke Sylvia and Jonathan Osborne, covering all things Magic basketball. By fans, for fans. Go Magic! What's going on, Orlando Magic fans? You guys are back with the Six Man Show. Today is February 21st, 2024. Jonathan Osborne here, as always, joined by my co-host Luke Sylvia, also joined by producer Kevin Tucker. Welcome to our five-year anniversary special of the Six Man Show. Luke, Kevin, how are we doing? We've got a big, big night ahead. We've got a full agenda. We're going to knock it all out. It's going to be a great time. Super excited to uh, reminisce on the last four years I've been a part of it. You'll share. I'm just, I know some some initial memories of the show and, and Kev as well and, and in terms of just what has uh, gone so right for us over these last few years, man. It's been uh, it's it's been awesome. Yeah, Jonathan Luke, glad to be with you guys tonight. Obviously different vibe here on YouTube live. You know, for all of you tuning in, obviously glad you're with us. Um, but yeah, this will be fun recapping the last five years, you know, looking ahead a little bit to the next twenty seven games, obviously. But uh yeah, pumped to be here, guys. I thought you were going to say the next 27 years. I don't know yeah. that we'll be doing this no. quite that <laughs> long, but it would be <laughs> nice for sure. So for those of you who are joining us you know, live on YouTube, if you're not familiar with this format and these live broadcasts, producer Kevin does one of these after every single Magic game. Sometimes myself or Luke will fill in for him on the post-game lives. Uh, but this is all interactive, so we can see the chat. Uh, Kevin will be bringing up. Uh, different messages from the chat throughout the show here. So uh, if you're watching, first of all, please go ahead and like and subscribe. Helps out the algorithm, helps out the the, the video, and helps out the channel. Um, and of course, we want to hear your thoughts and your favorite memories. You know, if you've been listening for a month or five months or a year, five years, whatever, we want to hear your favorite memories from the Six Man Show. But um, I thought it would only really be fitting um, if I started the, the show really um, the way it started initially. Um, so for those of you that don't know who you know may have not heard the the Genesis story of the Six Man Show, uh, almost five years ago. So Friday, uh, the 23rd, this coming Friday, is actually the legitimate five-year anniversary of, of the, um, the first episode that we released five years ago. And maybe about a week or so prior to, to tonight, five years ago, I was driving home with my wife and I was listening to The Podfather. I was listening to Philip Rossman Reich, Locked On Magic. And an episode ended. The Magic were really just starting to go on their run, uh, you know, not too far after Valentine's Day, uh, where they blew out the Charlotte Hornets on their way to go 22 and nine over the last 31 games of the season to finish 42 and 40 and to capture the Magic's first playoff berth in seven seasons up to that point. And I was listening to that pod, and I was so excited, just like listening to somebody talk about the Magic being good again and, and sort of looking forward you know, to the, the rest of the season. And the episode ended, as every podcast episode does, and I was bummed out. And I turned to my wife and said, man, I wish I had another uh, Magic podcast to listen to right now. And she, I don't even think, I think if she could go back and take back this sentence, she would think about it. But she said, why don't you start your own podcast, like your own Magic podcast? And at first I sort of shrugged it off. But the more and more I thought about it, much like a lot of you that we've met over the course of the last five years, especially five years ago, I didn't have many Magic fans in my life to talk about the Magic, except for my best friend who I've known since I was six years old, Will Robles. A lot of you remember that name. He was the initial co-host of the Six Man Show. I reach out to Will and I say, hey, you want to try this with me? He's like, yeah, I'm down to try it. So we started that. We covered the rest of that regular season. We covered the first round playoff series against the Raptors, including DJ Augustine's game winner in game one. We finish out that season and we start to get into the next season. And, and Will was like, hey, man, I love that you love this, but this isn't really for me. So at that point, I was like, well, I love this anyway, and I'm going to continue to do this. But shortly after that, I realized that I could not do what Philip Rossman Reich does each and every episode and, and sort of you know talk about this team by myself. I knew I needed a co-host and uh, I interviewed a few people, but I'm telling you from five minutes after I got off the phone with Luke, uh, our initial conversation, I knew he was the guy. And I went through that entire process. I think I talked to about five or six different people about joining the show and I tried to do my due diligence. I tried to give everybody a fair shot. But over and over again, this voice in the back of my head kept telling me, like, Luke is the guy. Luke is the guy. Luke is the guy. 
and I wanted to be sure that it was going to be the right person. This is not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to commit to doing. Back then it was once a week. Now it has evolved to twice a week. So I needed to be sure that the person that I brought in was going to be the right guy. And literally by the grace of God, Luke Sylvia, um, not to get emotional here. I love this guy. He's been awesome for four years. I could not do what I do without him. We brought on Kevin not that long after the fact, about a year after that. But Luke, if you listen to me and Luke talking about the Dinwiddie Cup back during the pandemic, you've you've been through the darkest days of the Six Man Show with us. So um, it's just been an incredible ride over the course of the last five years. If you would have told me five years ago when my wife made that comment in the car that you know roughly five years from that point I'd be doing a five year anniversary show and we would be reflecting on all of the privileges that we've you know been granted and all of the awesome conversations that we've been able to have and the, the great experiences that we've had, I legitimately never would have believed you in a million years. So sitting here five years later, I'm not the kind of person to like give myself like credit by any means, but I can't help but look back on the last five years and just be so incredibly grateful and proud of everything that we've done. And this is a hard thing that we do, guys. Like it's a lot of fun. It's the coolest thing that we've ever done. We love it more than anything. But it is not easy. And there are days where I'm like, man, do we really want to keep doing this? But it's interactions where we meet you guys in person and you tell us how much you love the show. Or we get to have a, a group night like we did last week where we have 200 Magic fans cheering their hearts out with us. It's conversations like we had with Jalen Suggs uh, about a week ago that you're going to hear in a few minutes here um, that just remind me all the time of this is what we do. This is why we do it. And this is why we love it so much. So although it's not always been easy, I have legitimately loved every minute of the past five years, and I genuinely could not do it without the two guys. Um, I guess to my left or my right, I really don't know at this point with the, the broadcast, but um, just want to say thank you to these guys here. Thank you to my wife. Thank you to these guys' wives. Um, and thank you to our entire team. When we're talking about Caleb and Ryan and David and Fazan. Um, I'm probably missing someone. Obviously, Ben. Um, just everybody that we've had the opportunity to work with, whether it be the Orlando Magic, you know, partnership department or, you know, Orlando Magic, like the social media team or the sales department, all of the players, all of the like broadcast and TV personalities that have joined us on the show at one point or another. Um, just genuinely want to say thank you to everybody. This has been the coolest thing that we've ever done. And I hope five years from now, we're doing this again for the 10 year anniversary show. And I hope we have just a, a slew of other memories to look back on. Uh, uh, before Luke hops in here, Carmen is here in the chat, by the way. We call manager <laughs> Carmen. Carmen is here. So, uh, yeah, shout out to Carmen for the initial idea. But, yeah, go ahead, Luke. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, yeah, you, you you talk about the Dinwiddie Cup and making sure that I was the guy. <laughs> I, I hope that after the Dinwiddie Cup, you were like, all right, this guy's going to stick around for a bit. Because that was, oh yeah. for those of you guys that haven't put the time on together, that was like COVID and everything, which is why we did that. Months on end, it felt like rolling into the bubble stuff. So, yeah, after that, knowing I made it through that, I was like, well, I think I'm locked in here for a while. So <laughs> now four years later almost, yeah. man, it's uh, it's crazy to think about. Yeah, it is it is super fun. Like thinking back, you know, this will be this is three years for me coming up here in a couple months, which is pretty crazy to think about. Um, we've been through a lot in three years. It's been awesome. Um but uh, what I was going to say was we've, we've gotten a lot of really cool opportunities. And I just want to shout out for those that don't follow us on social media. Uh, we got another cool opportunity for this show. So later in the show, you're going to get to hear from Jalen Suggs. We got to talk to him, you know, several days ago. So obviously we'll get to share that interview with, with you guys. But yeah, really, really special time. And obviously what's so exciting for me, like first off, all these opportunities have been great. Like, I, you know, like I love this fan base, like way too much, like an un, un, unhealthy obsession with this team, with this fan base. That's kind of why we all are here. Right. Um, and so being able to be a part of this in like a really big way is, is pretty cool. But then I just get excited for the future too. Right. Like I know we've done five years and that's cool, but like we see where the team is going, you know, and that just like that, the sky's the limit. Like all of us became like diehard magic fans because of a really good team back in those two thousands. And so I'm just thinking about all like the young Magic fans that are about to be not literally born, but, you know, you know, kind of born over the next decade or so, but reborn <laughs> over the next decade or so. And the fact that we hopefully get to play a part in raising up that next generation of Magic fans gets me freaking fired up. So, yeah, love you guys. Born really, really magicians. pumped about this. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I just, you know, sort of to bring it back. Like, I remember 
buying like my audio technica like 2100 x or whatever and like opening that for the first time and like recording videos for the podcast like on my little logitech webcam in the den at the back of my house and then like to think that we got to talk to i remember being in that same den at my house when the the trade deadline happened in 2021 and just being completely devastated that we were trading away vooch and the fact that you know I joke around, but like the conversation that we had with Vooch, like almost gave me a, a sense of closure. Like I, I think a mm -hmm. lot of people shared that sentiment. So just just thinking back to to that, and now like the one of the craziest things I think that we've done was the draft lottery watch party in May at Wall Street, where we had like seven eight hundred people there. And to think that I used to beg people to meet me at the Buffalo Wild Wings on Tampa Road in Oldsmar. And we would have like seven people show up. And then to think that, you know, we've been able to, to do events like that. And uh, going back to that 2019 team, well, like we, when I started the podcast and just how bad that, I mean, it was a good team. You know, they had a, a great run to end the year, but we all knew the ceiling of that. And just seeing that the way that the team has changed and evolved and not just that team, but when I think of like, you know, like Tony Quinn on the social media team, who has become a really good friend of ours, seeing how he has grown in his role and seeing how the social media team is like really hit their stride, sort of like their timeline coinciding with ours and just seeing other people within the organization and people that we've cultivated relationships with, just like seeing everybody grow together as this team is now growing. And I know we're going to talk about these last, you know, 27 games, but now that we're getting ready to go on this run, it's just like everybody around this team and like the fan base has been through the dark days. Like when we're talking about these last five years and now that we have like this exciting immediate future in front of us of like this playoff run and, you know, doing watch parties during the playoffs and doing post game lives during the playoffs and just thinking of what a post game live would be like after that DJ Augustine game winner, <laughs> like thinking about a Paolo Bancaro game winner and then what a post game live would be like after that like that's what just gets me so excited and, and so fired up yeah I, I do want to interrupt we have a very generous super chat from our longtime friend shahan so thank you oh so much gosh. shahan for that very very generous he says love you guys thanks for promoting such a loving community for magic fans go magic shahan appreciate shahan. that so much my guy thank you brother yeah that's incredible yeah kind of crazy that this playoffs right around the corner that's going to be insane it's going to be so fun it really is. So, I mean, I, I know that I've shared, you know, a couple of, of my favorite memories. I know we, we sort of put it out there for, you know, listeners a few days ago to share what some of your, you know, favorite memories are. But like Luke and Kevin, like apart from like the Vooch interview, which I know is a big one, like what are some of your favorite moments, you know, from the last three years, the last four years? Well, I mean, tonight we're getting to, to hear from, from Jalen Suggs. Draft night was with him. I mean that's that's got to be yeah. number one, and just how it, how it happened was incredible. So, for me, that's that's really high up there. That's maybe number one, uh, kind of neck and neck with Harry Buffalo, with the lottery watch party because that's yeah. hard do we want to beat like, as well. Do we want to like lay out those stories like for people that I mean the Jalen interview like that was you know two years ago almost. I'm sure we have a lot mm. of people that um, weren't listening back then. Yeah, I think, I think I can give the the full story for sure. Yeah. Um, to, it, and not take up too much time here, but uh, I'll I will never forget. So anytime, just to kind of peel back the curtains from you for you guys, anytime I see the six man show group chat pop up on my phone, and that there's a FaceTime happening, it's an exciting thing. Like something has happened. There's something that's happened that we want to talk about and, and react to together. So that happens, and I jump in, and essentially everyone in that, myself, Kevin, Jonathan, Jonathan and Kevin at that point are, are freaking out together about something that happened. And I was like, what, what happened? And they're like, go, go to our Instagram. And essentially what, had, what happened was Jalen Suggs reached out, and he said, I heard you guys are coming by the arena tonight. Would love to meet you guys. And that was like our first time interacting with a player that was him reaching out to us. And that was really special. That was, just, and, and that might be a top moment just in and of itself, like that that even happened. So for me, that happens. We coordinate with him um, that we're going to get to 
chat at some point that night on draft night when we're going to record and the magic were gracious enough to let us record at Amway. In the middle of recording, Jalen says, you know, essentially gives us the green light to come down, talk to him outside the locker room. He comes out, we talk for a minute, and Jonathan was like, Hey man, we're we're actually recording upstairs in the ozone if you're not, you know, if you would be interested. And Jalen was like, yeah, for sure. Just the nicest dude and has continued to show that over and over again to us and shows a ton of love, which has been awesome. But comes up, records like 10 minutes with us probably, reacting to Paolo as the draft pick, all those sort of things. So that for me, that that's a, a definite highlight that I will always talk about no matter how long the six-man show goes and no matter how many, how many memories we make. Yeah, for me, like if there's a lot of options like the Vooch thing was great the the Jalen thing was great I I just the lottery at Harry Buffalo like can never be topped like not not only like the moment was amazing like just like straight out of a movie incredible but now looking back you know coming up on two years later what that night means for this franchise for this fan base now that we know that Paolo is him like that that was, I mean, at this, I, I'm a loser, guys. Okay, just let me clarify this. Like, just preface it with this. Like, I watch our lottery reaction video Dude. probably once a month still. Like, it hits and me every, every time. time. Like, unbelievable moment. Like, it was so fun. Blake says it right here. He says, the lottery atmosphere, atmosphere will forever give me goosebumps. That was, like, one of, like, there are things in my personal life that are obviously very great. Birth of children, all that stuff. That stuff aside, like, that is up there as one of my favorite nights of my life, genuinely. Like, it was insane. Yeah. And then we have to do a show right after that at Harry Buffalo with, like, just the chaos around us. The floors were still sticky from all the beer that was thrown. Like, it was <laughs> it was legendary. I hope we never have to do it again, though. Like, never, ever, ever. <laughs> I don't want another lottery party ever again like that. But well, we it was do it epic. in Harry Buffalo, but yeah. That is also true. R.I.P. R.I.P. in peace. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, that's that's the quick answer. But, yeah, there's that. Yeah, that night was super special because we had planned because we had done one the year before at Harry <laughs> Buffalo. Yeah. We ended up with you know Jalen and Franz, which now ended up being a, a godsend, but it was sort of a disappointment at the time. But that next year, like we're putting it together, and then the week before, I start to hear whispers like, "Hey, the Magic might want to get involved in this event." And we're like, "What do you mean the Magic want to get involved in this event that we're putting on?" And like the excitement of that, like it just felt like regardless of what happened, that was going to be a good night. But to your point, Kevin, when I go back and rewatch that, it's like you can just you can it's the 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 stress and like the 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 tension in that room is so palpable. And then when we're not there and it's who was that to Oklahoma City at two, just literally like the release of the emotion in that building. Like I could I relive that every single time. And legitimately, like when we look back 20, 30 years from now, that night, like we got to, we, we were a part of, and we helped create a night that will forever be remembered in magic history. Yeah. Like people 20 years from now will be telling their grandkids and their kids about like when Paolo was the number one overall pick. I remember I was at the draft lottery with hundreds of magic fans and everybody went crazy. So yeah, Th like we, I think that's like the three highlights, like legitimately, you know, it's that it's and Jason Snacks. That. Jason, Jason Snatch, Snatch. Yeah, yeah, that was but that was inside joke, inside yeah, joke. Yeah, but that was yeah. a a great moment nonetheless. So, all right, I think that's enough for uh, for reminiscing uh, for now. Let's talk a little Magic basketball. We're coming out of the All Star break. The Magic open up the last twenty seven <laughs> games. What's going on here? Sorry, Eduardo says we won the first pick. I came out of the room telling my wife I'm going to impregnate her. <laughs> That is epic. That is, and so he's got funny. a small child in his arms in that photo. So maybe that photo was Congrats. the product. Way of to that go! Night. Congrats on your lottery, baby. <laughs> That's incredible. All Sorry, right. Jonathan. Go ahead. No, no, no. Well, definitely warranted. So coming out of the All Star break, uh, the Magic open up their last twenty seven games tomorrow night on the road at Cleveland. That game is going to tip off at seven o'clock Eastern. But uh, if you haven't been paying too much attention or very close attention, thought it would just be helpful to sort of recap where the Magic are so far. So the Magic currently sit eighth in the Eastern Conference with a record of 30 and 25. They're now 13 games back of first place Boston, seven games back of Cleveland, five games back of Milwaukee, three games back of New York, two and a half games back of Philly, a half game back of Indy. They're tied with Miami, but Miami holds the tiebreaker. So Miami is seventh, the Magic are eighth. 
The Magic are four games up on Chicago, six games up on Atlanta. So right now we're just trying to stay out of that play-in range. You know, you want to you wanna get up to, you know, five, six, somewhere there. Taking a look at the injury report a few hours ago, we thought it was clean. We heard that it was clean and everybody was healthy. We heard that from Jamal Mosley after the Magic practice today. And then about an hour after that, Jason Beattie came out and reported that Markel Fultz is now on the injury report listed as out for tomorrow's game due to knee injury management, which Markel Fultz by tomorrow will not have played basketball in nine days. So the fact that they went through an entire practice and he seemed to be healthy and now has been ruled out is a little bit concerning, guys. It's not not usual for someone to go through an all-star break and like you said, injury report clean, and then all of a sudden, like you're managing an injury. So there's something off there, and I don't know what it is, but eventually, hopefully, we find out and maybe get to the bottom of that. I don't know what it means. I don't know what it could mean, to be honest with you. I just know it smells really, really weird. Yeah. Um <laughs> It's it's weird, but it's also not unprecedented, right? Like this has happened already with Markel, even earlier, like early, early in the season. Um, obviously, it's it's still strange, but it's happened before. Um, obviously, don't love it. You know, the well, best thing about the best ability is availability, whatever that phrase is. Not having him, you know, is what it is. Before we keep talking, though, we have to interrupt with an incredibly generous super chat here from our guy Dylan Holden. Oh says, "Big gosh. time boys, five years is a major feat." Just the beginning. Glad to know you boys in the Magic Pod community is elite. Suggs is him. Magic Nation. Dylan, thank you so much, man. Dylan appreciate Holden. that. Our guy. That's appreciate crazy. that, brother. Thank you so much. That's crazy. I mean, might have to be favorite patron now. You're already my favorite Twitter follow. So, <laughs> Dylan Holden, everybody. He's, it's, man, what a guy. Yeah, Markel's, if you, Markel's stuff is weird, though. Yeah. If you're going to follow Dylan Holden, I love Dylan, but just be ready for a roller coaster because the man where it says emotions on his sleeve. <laughs> and that's and why we love to let you know exactly but how he, he knows, feels in that moment. But but he knows that. And that makes it the best part is that he's aware. It does. But yeah. man, shout out to you, Dylan. Uh, you didn't have to do that. And we, we really appreciate you. Yeah, this reminds me of last year. I think it was before J.I.'s like actual return. I think at one point he was listed as questionable. And I threw a hissy fit because it, like, nothing could have possibly happened in between hit, the ruling of him being questionable until the game. And it was like all of a sudden he went from questionable to like doubtful or out. And I was like, man, what a freaking tease that was uh, with, with J.I. But with Markel, it's a little bit different because we know that he hasn't been playing back to backs. You know, he's missed games recently. So to be out for nine days. I'm assuming you know they probably had you know more than just today practice. I'm sure they practiced earlier this week. Uh, and yeah, they did practice earlier this week. So for him, after a couple of practices, not even you know a full game, to now still be dealing with this knee injury, it just seems like it's not going away anytime soon. And now we've got 27 games until the All Star break, or not the All Star break until the you know the playoffs start. And Markell has been dealing with this basically all year long. All year, like. This is what kept him out, you know, initially going back to the beginning of November. And yeah, it, it's just unfortunate because a lot of the numbers say our best lineup is with Markel Fultz in the starting lineup. And if you're continually messing with the starting lineup, he's in, he's out, he's in, he's out. Anthony Black is starting. Now he's not playing. Now he's coming off the bench. Now he's not playing again. Now he's starting again. I just find it really hard for like the team to find the rhythm that they need to when this is the time of the year where you're tightening up your rotations, you're playing your best basketball, and you want to be playing your best basketball heading into April and into the playoffs, and I just think this is going to make it really difficult if this is something that is going con to continue to be an issue with Markel for the rest of the season. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, before we move on, got another super chat here. Manny, our guy Manny from Down Under with the Australian super chat. Says, happy five years, gang. Here's to many more. Appreciate you, brother. Okay. We're big fan our, of you. Our, our guy Manny, if you're not familiar, he's the guy that puts all of our like shorter social media clips together. Like the one that we went that went up today of me sounding like freaking Doc Rivers talking about the last 27 <laughs> games of the year. Uh, Manny puts all of those together, so you know we he couldn't does, do you know what we do without Manny either. Does such a good job. I'll also add like towards the end of like our magic segment here, guys. We'll I'll go through some of these questions here. 
So if you have any more questions for us, you know, throw them in the chat. We'll hit through some of them here in a little bit. All right. I, so, I mean, 27 games to go, guys. You know, we're again, we're starting with Cleveland. I know we talked about this on that that clip that we put out today. But then you're at Detroit, at Atlanta, versus Brooklyn, versus Utah, versus Detroit, at Charlotte, at Washington. Like, no Markel Fultz, but as of right now, Donovan Mitchell is questionable for tomorrow. If the Cavs don't have Donovan Mitchell, I kind of like our odds. I don't know that I would favor us just yet, but I would feel much better about our odds with a Donovan mitchell list Cavs team playing them tomorrow. So, Kevin, I know Luke and I, excuse me, sort of talked about this at the end of the last pod. But you've got to like that schedule coming out of the all-star break. Yeah, big time. And I mentioned this to you guys off the air. Like, yeah, the Cleveland game is tough. But, you know, Cleveland just had, you know, 10 days off or whatever the heck the all-star break is, you know, seven days, eight days, whatever it is. They had that time off, too. Yeah, they were one of the hottest teams in basketball, the hottest team in basketball going into the break. So while Thursday is a tough game, there's a chance that there's a little rust in Cleveland, you know? Like, if, if there's ever a time to hit Cleveland, it's, you know, when they haven't played a game in eight, nine days, whatever it's been. So, wow, that's a difficult game for sure. I think there's a chance the Magic can can sneak one out there. But then you're right, after that, I mean, such a such a good schedule for the Magic. I think there's only, what do we say, there's 12, 12 road games left, I believe, the rest of the way or something like that. Like, I mean, everything is lining up for a killer end of the season. And so as long as we stay healthy for the most part, I really think this team has, has a good shot at a good run. You know, Luke, you brought up some numbers earlier today in our chat, like of some of the projections, you know, basketball reference and others. The stats are saying it's, you know, it's it's looking good for the Magic to end up maybe even out of the plan as well. So I'm feeling optimistic, uh, but obviously we'll see how it goes. And I'll, the other thing, too, I'll, I'll mention this real quick about you talking about that Cleveland game uh, tomorrow or maybe some of y'all are listening to this back. Uh, tonight as you listen to this there's a, a good chance for rust and I think it was Philip Brossman Reich who asked one of the either the players or Mosley today in the media availability after practice do you feel do you feel more prepared or more just like on your game that you have to fly immediately on the road and play a team like Cleveland coming out of the all-star break is there kind of an urgency there essentially is what he was saying I think but the more that I thought about it, because at first I was like, ah, I don't know. And then I thought about it and I was like, well, you got to think these guys get back from all-star break and they're just sitting around at their house or whatever. And then they just have a game and they're able to just do their like home routine, go into that. I just feel like there's a chance you catch them sleepwalking. Whereas the magic are getting back into rhythm in terms of they're on the road, they're getting on the plane the, the day before they're going through all their stuff, maybe a sharper focus there. Also, the Magic can't shoot much worse, so when it comes to rust, we don't really have much to knock off in general because we aren't that great of a shooting team anyway. Cleveland's more middle of the pack, so maybe they'll uh, be off their game a little bit, and the Magic can do what uh, the Magic do so well, which is get into the paint, rebound the ball, a lot of things that they just are using physicality to do, cutting off ball, things that don't really require knocking off the rust. So maybe you're going to find some success against Cleveland on Thursday night. That's that's my hope anyway. I think one thing that's going to be so important is in games where the Magic have had a lot of rest this year, they haven't had that attention to detail defensively. That's what I'm that's like my number one key to this game against Cleveland. We talked about this on the last pod Luke, but the last couple of years, how good the Magic have been defensively after the All-Star break and the improvements that they've made. They don't have as much room for improvement this year because they've already been so good all season long, you know, sitting there at fifth in defensive rating in the entire NBA. But I still feel like they have another level to get to. I, I genuinely believe that this team can be, you know, if not the best, you know, maybe like two or three in the NBA over the course of the next 27 games. So that's going to be the biggest thing for me. Are we going to see the same magic where you've had a little bit of rust and you don't come out with that intensity and, and defend regardless of what the shooting looks like? But if the Magic can come out and have like a vintage performance and hold Cleveland like under 100 points, I'm just going to have all of the irrational confidence in the world that we're going to exceed expectations over these next 27 games. Like the fourth seed, we're three games back of the fourth seed right now. Like that is totally in striking distance. So um, do we get that high? Is it sustainable? Do we stay there? I don't know. Uh, 
But three games back, like that should be the team's goal. Like they should be saying, hey, we can go and get the fourth seed. Jonathan, do you, Luke, do you guys want to go through some of these questions now? Because I think some of this stuff will tie yeah. into uh, some of the stuff that we're talking about here. One of the very first questions that we got here in the chat, I'm trying to find it. Oh, goodness. I'm choking here. It was about AB potentially starting tomorrow um, because of Markel being out. So the question was, do you think AB will start tomorrow? And then there was a follow-up question that I thought was really, 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 really interesting. And it is, oh, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm fumbling it, guys. Where did it go? I lost it. Here it is. Uh, nope, that's not it. Okay, the question was, does AB start tomorrow? And then does Jamal Mosley start AB the rest of the regular season to get some like continuity and momentum like throughout the rest of the season? I know what we probably would want to do, but Jonathan first, maybe what, what do you think? Do you think that's something he would do? Oh, here. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, there's a totally different conversation between what the Magic probably should do and what the Magic will do. If it were me and I was making those decisions... Obviously, they have so much more information, you know, as it pertains to Markel and his injury. But at this point, like we've been doing this with him since November, like he missed how many games like sitting out. If it was going to go away, it, it would have gone away at that point, but it didn't. And it's come back, obviously, multiple times now. It's something that he's still having to deal with. So am I super confident that he's just going to switch up the starting lineup for the rest of the year? Maybe he should. I don't think he will. Um, I do think there's a good chance that Anthony Black starts, just given the level of success that the starting lineup has had with Anthony Black and the record that we had earlier in the year when Markel Fultz was out. So I would like to see that, and I would be a little surprised if Anthony Black isn't starting. I think you have to. I, he, what we have seen is when Markel Fultz is out, typically Anthony Black is going to start. The only other lineup that we've really seen when that's not the case, I actually just had it pulled up here too. It's like the Caleb um, Chuma Jalen yeah. at the one, basically. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Also, it was, yeah, Jalen, Franz, in that game in Dallas when AB balled out with like 30 minutes off the bench. Starting lineup that night was uh, Jalen, Franz, Paolo, J.I., Wendell. So. That's the other one you've seen, but for the most part, everything shows that the us the same that most... one that J.I. played like eight minutes? Yes. And then did yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so weird, game. weird game all around. So I'm going to go with the one that stayed consistent. So yeah. that um, that's that's what I'm going to go with is that A.B. does start. And I think when Fultz is healthy, they're going to just put him back out there at starting lineup. I don't expect to see anything different. Yeah, we'll hit a couple more here. Fazan with the Super Chat. Appreciate you. Fazan, one My of our guy. writers. He said later that I didn't have Luke around to teach me how to add a comment to a super chat, SMH. So <laughs> the comment was separate from the super chat. For Shout those out of you to that uh, don't understand. Fazan is a fantastic <laughs> basketball mind. He brilliant. is such a hard worker and, and such a great writer. The kid it might be the worst person I've ever met in my life when it comes to technology. <laughs> Love you, Fazan, but that's, that's just amazing. A fact. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, here, here's a good one. I've, I've wanted. Yeah, no, that's not true. We're eventually going to talk about this as the season goes on later. But we'll we'll do a little teaser of this tonight. Janine says, "Which team do you think would be the best matchup for the Magic in the first round of the playoffs?" So if you think about the potential teams that the Magic could face, let's say the Magic get the six seed, that's probably going to be like Milwaukee or Cleveland, maybe New York. If they get the five seed, it's going to be the same group. Like maybe it's that trio. Let's just pick from that trio, like Milwaukee, New York, Cleveland. Luke, maybe you get to go first this time. Take your pick out of those three. Uh, maybe Milwaukee, just for the sake of the, the the downward spiral they've had with Doc Rivers being the coach and finding his footing. Of course, by postseason, maybe he's got his footing a little bit there. I, a lot of these teams are not desirable because defensively they are very good. You look at the Knicks, they're a top 10 defense. You look at the Cavs, very much top 10 defense, right? So there's there's a lot there that, that makes me think, like, I don't know if I'm really thinking too much about who I'd rather want. Maybe the Knicks, because possibly, this, I don't know if this is out of pocket to say, but they've got injury history. And maybe in a series you got some guys that go down with injuries, and injury. they've they're dealing with that right now. And there's reason, like, I'm sure that people, when they look at, like, maybe a preview matchup against the Magic, like, the Magic have had a hard time staying healthy. 
Maybe that makes you more of a favorable matchup in that respect. Markel Fultz can't stay in the lineup, yet he's their best. Yeah, he's he's the best option when it comes to lineup data, and that's what it all suggests. So I do think that's a real angle, especially when you're the Magic, where it's like we hope to make the playoffs, but we understand there's not a huge likelihood we make it past the first round. So in that respect, you just start thinking of some wild angles such as health. It's like, well, maybe the Knicks aren't going to be healthy at that time even, even going into the round. Who knows? So so for me, I know that's kind of a cop-out, but to be honest, I haven't done a ton of deep dive into these teams and as far as like how they match up against us. I guess we know with the Knicks, like we've swept them so far. One more matchup against them, but we've faced them at some really weird times. Before the OG trade, Brunson out during that matinee game. Uh, most recently, they were very banged up when we beat them. We were banged up too, for what it's worth. But I, I don't know. It's a it's it's hard for me to gauge. The Knicks are man, especially if they got like Mitchell Robinson back. They're they're a pretty scary team to play. Yeah, for me, um, right now it's definitely not the Cavs. Just the way that the Magic have struggled with like true rim protectors this season having to go up against Evan Mobley and Jared Allen for, you know, four to seven games and thinking about if other guys aren't knocking down shots, just how hard, you know, those third and fourth games for Paolo and Franz to be able to get the things that they want in a series like that. The Milwaukee one, I, I kind of like, because it, it does feel like obviously, you know, they had to give up a ton to get Dame and that team doesn't feel, you know, as deep as they have in recent years. And, you know, if you ask JJ Redick, I'm not all that worried about a Doc Rivers you know, coach team when it comes to the playoffs. That guy has blown more playoff leads than anybody ever, essentially. Uh, when you look at the Knicks team, Julius Randle, OG Ananobi, Jalen Brunson, that trio definitely scares me. If Mitchell Robinson is back into the fold, again, the Magic have had issues with rim protectors throughout the season. If I could pick anybody, I know it's not going to happen. It's incredibly unlikely. But give me the Pacers or, or give me the Bulls, right? Like those are teams that we've had a lot of success against this year. Uh, those are are not going to happen. But ultimately, this might not be like the sexy thing to say. I want the team that is going to expose as many flaws as we have so that there is no question heading into this offseason what this front office needs to address to improve this team. I don't want any kind of, you know, false hope going into the offseason. Like, oh, well, what about that guy? He wasn't so bad in the playoffs. Or, you know, oh, he shot close to 40% from three and that. Maybe he is blah, blah, blah. I don't want any of that. Show us exactly what we need to improve on, what we need to get rid of, who we need to move. And then that should be the focus going into this offseason is how we can optimize this team around Paolo and Franz and what pieces absolutely need to move. Yeah. Definitely. I think we'll let's hit just really short one and then one more after this. Obviously, we still got a whole Jalen interview to show off. Uh, first off, David says, is it appropriate to call Philip Rossman Mike the pod father? 100%. Dude's a legend. Absolutely. Five days a week for however many years. Absolutely the Orlando Magic pod father. And then the goat. this says, who are each of your guys' favorite Magic players of all time? Well, we might hit some more questions later, but for now, we'll we'll hit this one. And then obviously, we'll, we'll hit our old uh, right, Jalen interview. Maybe. Jonathan's showing off his T-Max sticker on his water bottle. Stuff. It's Tracy McGrady. He's the reason I fell in love with basketball. Just that combination of skill and size and just an absolute bucket. Just reason I fell in love with basketball. Just love Tracy McGrady. Luke? Nice, a nice uh, comment that you threw up there, Kev. Very this is my old friends. They moved to Kansas. So anyway, that's all. <laughs> no, shout out to Kevin's friends. Um, that's awesome. No, I, I mean, for me, it's Dwight. It's got to be Dwight. It's number one magic player in magic history, debate a wall, and mm. did a lot for Orlando and for relevance. So he was awesome, and it's always great when a number one pick pans out like Dwight Howard did. Obviously, the the you know the exit wasn't super ideal, but for what it's worth, we we've done whole episodes on Dwight Howard about how you have forgiven Dwight. And have moved on from it. I might have been one of the first to move on from it. Because I always had the mindset of how great the memories were when he was there. So, for me, it's Dwight Howard far and away. Yeah, mine's Dwight as well. A couple other wild cards. Michael Doliak? That's what I was going to say. A couple other wild cards in there for me. One is Michael Doliak, which is a whole different story. But yes, uh, Dwight Howard, I mean, 
just everything, everything and more. Like he's the guy. Can't wait for his retirement ceremony if that ever happens. But uh, yeah, he's the guy that got me. He's the reason I'm sitting right here, you know? So uh, big, big, big fan of Dwight Howard. A lot of other guys too, but I'd say Dwight. All right. And what would an episode of the Six Man Show be without shouting out our wonderful patrons? So uh, first of all, like we literally would not still be doing this most likely if it was not without the support of our patrons. So um, if you're not a patron and, and you've been a fan of the show for some time and you're looking for an excuse or an opportunity to join the Patreon and help support the show and um, help us continue this mission, like we're not shy about this. We would love nothing more than if this was our full time gig and we could just do this all the time. It would allow us to make more content, obviously, but better content um, if this is what we could focus on full time. So we would love uh, to be able to do that eventually and continue to grow the Orlando Magic fan base. So again, uh, if you want to support us, every little bit helps. You can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show. I'm going to try to get through this as quickly as I can. But uh, the five year anniversary show, we have to give a very special shout out to all of our Hall of Fame and elite tier patrons. First of all, our friends over at the Court Cousins. If you haven't checked out their podcast already, please go ahead and check that out. Uh, best friend of the program, Drew Gooden, Armin, Carson Tulo, Ellis, Jonathan Borges, Normal, Magic Player History, Gabe Gaines, Wiffle, Michael Martin, Jamel Miller, Michael Salapong, Donkey Punch Dave, I'm never going to live this down, but Paolo and Francis, <laughs> Warmth. Pierre A, Dylan Holden, our guy, Mr. Mikey, Eduardo Sanchez, Danimo, Dotto 15, Bobby Skinner, Goaty 93, Teddy Sylvia, Eric Lopez, Fuchsia, Bill Fulton, Edmund Lagone, Jose Esquilin, Caleb Pete, Candleism, Time Mr. TV, ESPN Really Sucks, Gear 95, Shred, Junior Bruce, Half Rican, Shahin 177, Bobby the Don, Hemlo, Ben Hemro, RM Prof 221, Magic Kid 714, Mysterious Mosley, Victor Cologne, Irish Magic Mike, Austin Lampy, Random Hustle, Only Franz, Maria, Keith Wallace, Fritz Currency, Kev Bruff, Sal, Casey Green, Santi Leon, Kane Eckler, The Distract, Ahmad Timsa, Chansu, Tom Gadsden, Dead Air, Richard Tuttle, Jeremiah Quintero, Debo 1980, and Magic Matt. A big thank you to all of our patrons. And just want to say, like, we've had the opportunity to meet so many of you, and so many of you have become more than just our patrons. You guys have become our friends and part of this Magic family. So just eternally grateful to all of you. And again, if you want to find our Patreon, you can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show. Luke, talk about jam hot chicken. We lost him. I'll talk about jam hot chicken. We went last week. Jam Hot Chicken, amazing chicken joint in Winter Park. Uh, one of our favorite places to hang out. We went last week. Jonathan, those of us, those that didn't see on our social media, Jonathan and I tried the Jam Hot level of heat at Jam Hot Chicken. We took just took a bite because that's all we could handle. It was intense. It was crazy, but it was still really dang good, like super good. So obviously, whether you like insane hot or even normal, like my meal that night, I got no spice. It's still kicking it's so good it's so so good i don't mean kicking and spicy i mean kicking it's in good get the box get the sando get get the tenders love our guys at jam hot chicken they're just big big magic fans big sponsors and supporters of our show and so we're always really really pumped uh to support them this season so check them out on all their social medias check them out they're in winter park you i promise you guys you will not regret it go there check them out and obviously let them know that the six man show sent you Last week when we were at the the OKC game, Shaq's retirement jersey, I was talking to one of our longtime listeners and he was asking me like, is Jam Hot really that good? And I was like, dude, I'm telling you, yes, they pay us. We don't lie about that, but it is some of the best chicken we've ever had. And he was hyping up another Nashville hot chicken joint in the, the Orlando area. I'm not going to you know drop any names here, but he went today and I asked him, how is it compared to this place? And he said, I don't want to admit it. But jam hot chicken is better. So for the best jam, uh, or the best Nashville hot chicken, I would say, in Orlando, be sure to check out jam hot chicken. Now, without further ado here, uh, we had the opportunity to have an awesome conversation with Jalen Suggs uh, just a few days ago, like right as the All-Star break was happening. So this was before all of the All-Star weekend kind of stuff. Uh, but here is our conversation with our guy, our friend, Jalen Suggs. All right, Orlando Magic fans, we're going to continue celebrating the five-year anniversary of the show here. We thought it would be fun to have a special guest. So now we are joined by none other than Jay Sizz, Jay Suggs. In my opinion, for my money, the most electrifying man in sports entertainment, Orlando Magic guard, Jalen Suggs. Jalen, thanks for joining the show, man. How are you? I'm good. I appreciate the gas. Um, I'm well. I'm well. How are you? 
<laughs> we're, we're doing great, man. We really appreciate you joining the show. It's been a, a few months since we've had the opportunity to, to sit down and talk with you. Last time was, uh, I think, like mid-August. Like The schedule had just come out. We were taking a look at that. We were talking to you about that. And Luke and I couldn't help but notice, but there was this new energy around Jalen Suggs. You just seemed so much more confident. And you talked about all of the work that you put in last summer and in, in getting ready for this season and how we we're going to see like a new Jalen Suggs this season. And we have. I mean, you've been playing with your hair on fire, definitely in the running for an all NBA defensive team. You're shooting the ball like you haven't, you know, so far throughout your career, you know, getting closer to 39, 40%. Jalen, for you, have you met your expectations for this season? Have you exceeded them? Like, what's this season been like for you? Um, I don't know. It's a bit hard to gauge. Um, I've been I've been really proud, uh, proud of myself. Um, you know, I think the the play the play speaks for itself. Um, but I think just how I'm navigating this year in comparison to to others, um, I am really proud of, and I think I've been doing a good job in that. Um. Just in terms of, of not being too high, not being too low, um, you know, bad games, good games, uh, you know, rolling with them, learning from them, you know, and continuing to keep it pushing. And uh, I think ultimately just fulfilling what my, I believe my purpose is. And, um, you know, I pray about it before every game. I'm just I'm, I'm grateful to be in an arena and bringing bringing a group of people together, uh, you know, with one common cause in basketball. And two, you know, it gives me a platform to continue to shine light, you know, on not only my personality, my character, but Jesus Christ and, and his name and all that he's done for me and my journey so um yeah i think in that sense um i've been really proud of myself uh this first half of the year or up until all-star and um yeah really just looking to continue to build on it and um you know excited about what the future holds well nobody has enjoyed it more than magic fans seeing you guys catch your stride seeing you catch your stride and still being able to i think there's a, a lot of like grace in it uh, to be said like for you to be the energizing player we know that you were coming into this season but on top of that, you you feel more controlled still. Like you have more control and more balance this year and and what you're doing, maybe not moving quite as fast or it's all calculated. Mm -hmm. And so to to maintain like the joy you have for the game along with just like really honing your tools has been super awesome to watch. And and one area that you have improved even more. Last year you had an impressive jump in this category. You know what I'm gonna say. Your three point <laughs> percentage, right? Like That's you're shooting more threes at this point um than you have in your career. Last year you played fifty three games. You you're already at forty nine played and started this year, shooting more threes, shooting thirty eight, almost thirty nine percent as we do record this. For you, Jalen, have you noticed the the gravity? Like, are you demanding more gravity now that, that people are maybe respecting a little bit more your shot from the outside? And how does that, like, have you felt it? And, and how does that open up for everybody else on your team? It feels so much better. Like, when guys have to close out on you, when you're shooting, you know, high 30s instead of 21 and you're treating you as a shift guy and telling you to shoot it, um, it feels so much better being on this side. So, yeah, I, I don't really want to go back <laughs> to that other side. But, um, yeah, you know, it's just been it's been super dope. Um, and I think a lot of the credit has to go, you know, to to the coaches and people we have on the staff and, and you know, those who worked with me, you know, this offseason and continue to work with me through the summer. Um, you know, my pops, um, Corey. Uh, Coach Nate, while he was here, um, you know, through the summer, uh, was really huge for me. Um, you know, me and Coach Oz uh, have been together and at it every day. Um, you know, and he keeps me, you know, humbled, motivated. Um, you know, almost like a, like an OG is what I call him. Um, you know, so I think just a lot of the credit, Randy, uh, Randy Gregory, a lot of the credit goes to those guys and, and what they've done and poured into me. Um, and I think for myself, you know, just trusting in that, believing in everything, all the work that I've done, you know, the hours in the gym, uh, the time spent on film, uh, the work that I put into myself, you know, as a human and as a basketball player, um, you know, to have that come out and show. And, you know, now not only do I feel it, uh, but others feel it, you know, the numbers show it, um, you know, I think is a really cool thing and just, you know, a testament to the journey. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to get caught up in the moment, um, you know, as things aren't going well and it feels like, you know, there is no there is no end, um, you know, but it feels like so long ago that I was, you know, that player, um, you know, that, that wasn't shooting it well, that was stuck in go mode, that couldn't break it up and slow it down and process the game. Um, you know, I almost don't even remember, it, um, you know, and it's only been two years. You know, I'm only a third year pro. It feels like I, I've been here, you know, for a while. So, um, you know, I think just speaking on the journey and um 
and trying to trust in that and and not get too caught in the moment has been something that I put an emphasis on. And um, yeah, it's really cool seeing it all come to fruition. And uh, you know, guys got to close out to me now. I like that. <laughs> Jalen, I think I speak for myself and and Kevin that one of the the greatest privileges for us and being able to do this show is like getting to talk to guys like yourself and we've been lucky enough and you've been so great to us and, and great to magic fans and always generous with your time that, you know, we have a little bit of a, a personal relationship. So I, I, I don't want to speak for everybody, but for me, this season watching you has been personally one of the most fulfilling things. Like since I've been covering the team and really my life as a magic fan, we, like we saw the, the flashes from you, like the first couple of seasons, But seeing you really start to put it like all together and now other people around the league are seeing what we've seen all along. And now that you're doing it on a more consistent basis, what has that been like for you? Like seeing like the national you know conversation around Jalen Suggs shift and people wake up and see not only what you're doing on a nightly basis defensively, but now that the offense is coming around, like what's that been like for you? Um, It's been really cool, Uh, you know, just kind of getting respect and love, you know, from from different coaches, players, um, you know, different analysts, you know, and people. I got interviewed by Derek, David Aldridge. That was crazy to me. Like, <laughs> growing up playing 2K and everything, like, David Aldridge is legendary. So um, it's, it's been really dope, you know, getting that love and, um, and you know, really just, again, it gives, gives me the opportunity to show people who I am, you know, and I feel like, again, I was just, I was a shell of myself, you know, and I really wasn't, I wasn't truly living, you know, as Jalen Suggs. I, I was, I was trying to be something I wasn't, um, you know, and, Really, all that it's done is given me now uh, the platform to expand my territory and continue to to show who I am as a person, as a player, um, as a teammate, uh, son of God, all of that. So it's been really dope. Um, you know, it's funny um, just getting to play guys, you know, and after games, you know, going saying good game and, you know, they're giving me acknowledgments, you know, and man, you, you made a big jump, you know, keep stay healthy, keep hooping, man, you know, love, love what you're doing over there. Um, you know, I just think that's really cool. You know, as a regular person playing in the NBA, these are people that I've always watched. These are people that I still watch and, and I am a fan of, you know, just being a fan and loving the game of basketball. So, um, you know, just to get love from that sense and uh, to get acknowledged is always great, um, you know, but it's really kind of helped me, you know, boost and push who I am as a person, you know, uh, also as a basketball player, but being able to show people, you know, who I am, um, you know, the way I want to live, the person I want to become, um, you know, has been super dope. You you talk about like who you are as a player and then who you are as a person and, and separating those things at media day. You, you talked about this. You just said like you, you've come into your own faith and, and learned kind of Jalen the player versus like, this is not who I am, but I, I do play basketball. Can you talk about how that started? I I know that like myself, I'm a Christ follower. Jonathan is, and our producer Kevin is as well. So it's always been super interesting for us. And and honestly, something that like makes you proud as a Christian to be like, man, one of my favorite basketball players is also a Christian to share that faith. Um, Can you talk about like where that started? Did you grow up like, in the space of church or like did this all is this all sort of new for you and and how it came about um no i grew up around it my dad um grew up in the church um you know and you know as i was growing up you know my great grandpa you know he was the team chaplain you know uh for the minnesota timberwolves and you know and a pastor back home um so just always was around it um knew of it uh, but never had my own relationship. Um, and, you know, and going to mini ha ha, you know, I was always learning, you know, we had Bible classes, we had chapel, you know, we had all these things, uh, you know, placed around us to help us learn, you know, but again, I don't think that I ever had my own relationship with Christ, you know, and now, you know, as I continue to get older, continue to learn, um, you know, I was, I was baptized, you know, when I first got here, first got drafted, um, you know, and again, I still never had my own relationship until, you know, this summer, I really had to, you know, take the time, take a step back and, you know, put an emphasis on it. You know, I just, I thought I had pushed it off too long and, um, you know, basketball had become who I was, you know, I was no longer just Jalen, you know, being back home and being a young kid, um, you know, you play basketball, it's fun, it's cool, but, you know, you got friends who, you know, keep you humble, family who keep you humble, you know, uh, we didn't grow up with much. So, you know, I was just still kind of felt like a normal kid until, you know, I got here and now I just got, you know, kind of a false sense of, you know, what you have to be as an NBA player. And I tried to adapt to that and um, learn some tough lessons from it. You know, a lot lost some people, um, 
you know, learn some hard, uh, you know, some hard examples. But, um, you know, I think it helped grow and mold me, you know, into who I can be and who I am right now, um, you know. And I think I have to completely separate the two because the way I am on the basketball court, you know, just ferocious, competitive. Uh, I talk crazy. You know, I just kind of leave it all out there. But that's a place uh, – for me, I kind of look at it as an art form now. It's somewhere I can go to express myself fully, um, express myself authentically, do something I love, um, you know, and just be me. You know what I'm saying? It kind of let, let out some of that other side, uh, you know, the aggression, the competitiveness, all of that. Um, you know, when I get off the court um, again, now I can resonate. You know, I can I feel people who are athletes. Um, who are competitors at the highest level, um, you know, and want to compete and play at the highest levels, you know, I can also, you know, resonate and, and talk to it and understand where people are coming from, you know, from a Christian side, from people who are just navigating life, trying to figure out their journey, who they are as a person, um, you know, and being able to do both, I think is super dope. So, um, yeah, I have to separate the two, you know, I'm a basketball player, you know, I do that. I, you know, I got to the highest level and I'm really proud of myself, you know, and it's really cool what I can do with that platform, you know, but Jalen, the person, um, you know, the human being, he can't be, uh, you know, who that person is on the basketball court. You know, I can't live like that every day. And, uh, you know, separating the two, I think, has been really uh, a healthy thing that I've done for myself. And, uh, yeah, it's been it's been a dope journey, dope, dope way to, uh, you know, keep learning about myself and, you know, who I am. Jalen, I find it so interesting. Like you talked about, you know, your grandfather was the, the team chaplain for the Timberwolves and a passer. And it just it goes to show you that as much as you may be surrounded by like other Christians and and other people that have that relationship with Christ, it really has to be a decision that you make for yourself. Uh, but something that you touched on a moment ago, and I think you, you mentioned it uh, at Media Day as well, is that, that J.I. actually helped you get baptized, you know, when you first got to Orlando. Can you just talk a little bit about that and like how that came to be and what that experience was like for you? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, it was something that I really wanted to do, was something I was looking forward to, um, you know, and I wanted to start that journey. You know, I, I really did, or I thought I did, um, you know, and, uh, you know, just getting closer with some of the guys on the team, you know, me and Jay, I started spending some more time together. Uh, you know, I'm a new kid, uh, you know, fresh to, to an NBA team. You know, I just, I kind of want to get to, get to know everybody, uh, who they are as people, you know, cause that's, that's kind of how I've always been a leader. Um, you know, understanding how people work, you know, what they're into, what their interests are, what they respond well to and things like that. Um, I think that all plays into leadership. I think you have to understand that, understand them from a human side to be able to lead them and, uh, and help grow, teach and learn, uh, you know, from the sports aspect side as well. Um, so just in talking to him, hearing about his story, um, you know, he kind of connected me. And, uh, yeah, we took a drive out there one morning and it was a tough wake up. I woke up at like five. Uh, so we get out there right as the sun was rising and everything. Um, and we went down to the, went down to Daytona Beach, um, uh, you know, and he took me down there and, uh, yeah, I got baptized and it was dope. You know, it was a super dope moment. Uh, you know, I think it really brought us closer together. Um, you know, but also I now knew, I now knew of God. I knew God, but I didn't have a relationship with God, you know, and I think that was that was the separator. And, you know, as I continued these past two years, you know, from that baptism, um, I think I'd been getting signs to slow down and to recognize him and, and to put more attention and time towards him. Um you know, but my mind was so caught up and, you know, now I'm here and I'm living out a dream. Um, you know, now I'm trying to navigate my life and have fun and experience this and that, um, you know, while trying to play basketball. And I think, um, you know, I think that's where, again, where a lot of the injuries came from. I think that's where a lot of my struggles came from was just God giving me signs and telling me to slow down and recognize him and, and really start to develop, you know, that relationship. And, uh, I finally did, you know, this summer I took that time and, um, I, you know, it was just the greatest decision I've ever met. So I think, again, it, it plays perfectly, you know, with how my start of my NBA career was going, how it was going since I'd gotten baptized. Um, you know, it was rough until I started focusing and figuring out, you know, myself as a person, my relationship with Christ. And in that, everything else now is starting to, the pieces are coming together. I'm starting to figure it out. And, um, you know, I think it just goes to show, you know, what really matters, you know, and I think we put, uh, put a certain emphasis and uh on things that don't really matter you know material things and you know things that are cool in a sense um you know but you know in reality uh you know you're a human being you know christ is king and um you know in doing that all else comes what what do you think like just maybe not necessarily game related it can be but what part of your faith like where have you noticed it the most in your life, aside from separating Jalen, the person and the basketball player and finding that kind of rhythm and balance? But but what are some maybe just one 
area that you've been like, man, since I've like came to own my faith, that got baptized, all that, this part of my life feels different. What what would you say? Like, where can you pinpoint kind of life change for you? Um, all over, honestly. But I think the biggest the biggest thing has been, um, you know, just I I felt so much more at peace. Um, you know. Again, through tough times, through times of celebration, all of that, I just feel that peace. You know, I'm comfortable. You know, understanding that again, I'm more than than what my job title says. You know, I'm more than just you know a single human being. You know, now I just I kind of feel a part of a part of something bigger than myself. You know, bigger than bigger than my ego. And you know, I think that's a really humbling thing. Um, it gives me a lot of a lot of confidence, a lot of motivation because I'm. I yearn for it. I was striving to grow in that aspect of my life, um, you know, and it's taking care of everything else. But I think just that piece, you know, I'm much, I'm much happier um, with all that's going on, um, you know, no matter what's happening, um, you know, I'm, I'm understanding, I'm flowing, um, you know, I'm taking on and, and feeling emotions and different things, uh, but I'm not getting lost in them. You know, I'm able to now, you know, focus on them, understand them, move past them and, and stay solid, stay in my, stay in my center. And uh, that's been really important for me. So I've always been an emotional person. You know, I wear my heart on my sleeve and, um, you know, it's just kind of who I am. You know, I, now I'm, I'm owning it. Um, you know, I'm showing it and it's really cool that people are, uh, you know, respecting it. Um, they're now sharing stories with me and, um, and, you know, it's just, it's just really dope to see how far, how far along I've come with it and people recognizing it and, um, yeah, just really feeling a part of a, of a bigger community, man. Jalen, we can't you know thank you enough for you know sharing that. It, it's so important for somebody of of your platform, you know, to to speak on things that a lot of people can relate to, but oftentimes it can be really hard to talk about. And yep. to sort of you know tie all this back together, you know, and talking about the magic here as we are today, and it, it seems like as the days go by and the the weeks go by. This Magic team is inching closer to to postseason basketball, whether that be the play in or or the playoffs. Like, how exciting is that for you guys and the rest of the guys on the roster? And you know, how fired up are you to be you know, in a position to play playoff basketball come April? I am so excited. I'm so excited, and it's funny because we're at a point in the season now where like this is when you are most tired and I feel it and I, I feel tired. I feel a bit exhausted. Um, but I also have like just this fire, you know, um, I want to get to play out basketball. I want to, I want the city to feel it. Um, you know, I want to experience it with, uh, you know, with everybody that we have in the locker room with everybody here, uh, magic supporters. Um, you know, I want us all to experience that together. Um, you know, it's some I've never got to play in, you know, I've only seen it from afar, but you know, just having memories of watching playoff basketball of, of waiting to be there, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, just hearing stories about how much different it is, how the level of basketball, the competitiveness, you know, how it unifies, you know, people, a city, uh, you know, just seems it all sounds super dope. You know, and I want to really be able to live that out in real time. So, um, yeah, tired, but super fired up, man. Super excited. Um, you know, we're learning, we're growing, we're getting better. Um, uh, you know, we're healthy, staying healthy and, uh, you know, just really looking forward to, you know, after break coming out and, you know, we're home so much, you know, I think we got, we got the toughest part of the schedule out the way, you know, not even in terms of just who we're playing, but the travel and, you know, how much is going into that and two West coast trips and 10 day East coast trips, like just really, really tough schedule. Um, You know, now we're home and we get to experience this backstretch with everybody here, man. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Jalen, like I mentioned, and we'll, we'll leave you with this here. We're doing this as part of our five year anniversary show our our whole mission statement is basically by fans for fans. Jalen, anything that you want to say to Magic fans here before we leave you? Um, man, uh, a lot I could. Uh, but thank you, thank you all for for the love, for the support, um, all the energy that you bring us. You know, all the love that you give us. Um, you know, as minute as it may seem, sometimes you know it's all felt. And uh, even just walking through the tunnel looking up in the stands, seeing everybody cheering us on, you know, good times, bad times, you know, no matter what it is, uh, you know, I walk out in the street and people giving me love now and saying, go magic. So just continue to love us, continue to give us that support because we love you guys. Uh, we need you guys. And um, yeah, down this home stretch, let's get the all rocking. Jalen, you're the best. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate you guys. Jalen Suggs, man. I just love that guy so much don't really have words like when when we talk about like just watching 
you know somebody's like character arc like the character arc of Jalen Suggs has just been so incredible to to get to watching and get to witness and we're always so grateful for him to you know spend time with us on the show and uh, be able to bring you know those types of conversations to Magic fans whether it, you know we talk about our faith something that you know we don't hide from it's just it, it is who who we are you know it's a big part of who we are so when we get to have those conversations we like to have those conversations but when you get to hear him talk about uh, playoff basketball, you know, and what it means to to this city and what it means to Magic fans. So, uh, again, just so appreciative to Jalen uh, for his friendship, the relationship that we've all been able to to build with him, and and just for taking the time. Just awesome conversation. Just really, really proud of that. Can Can I just say his face when we asked him about the playoffs? Did you see his face light up, guys? That was so fun. That was sorry. Go ahead, Luke. No, I I was just gonna say, as we do this and we make relationships with with various players you start to connect with the person that's that's playing the game not just like the player on the court and so Jalen has very quickly honestly right after he sent us that dm that day about wanting to meet us i have no idea still how he figured out we were going to be at amway at the time now kia but stuff like that from that day forward it's like man he's just He's awesome. He's one of the players that I am going to forever root for. I hope it's in a Magic uniform uh, for the rest of his career. But if it's not, I will still be a huge Jalen Suggs fan. That dude is is the best, and I know he'll still be showing us love after. Hey, before we move on to like the next segment and stuff, really quick, we did get a super chat right before we went into the Jalen interview. So shout out to Jesus. He says, been here since day one. Y'all the best. Always appreciate the super chat. And then the other thing is... Um, I got to admit, guys, I have a surprise for both of you. Before we go to the next segment, oh, a surprise no, for both of you, Jonathan and Luke, okay? Um, I was thinking about well, how could I surprise Jonathan and Luke on the six-man show? And I was like, maybe we get like a special guest, like surprise them with a guest. And I was like, well, the last time we got surprised by a guest was at Jam Hot with Bo Outlaw. And you guys are so flustered that, you know, we, I was like, maybe I won't do a guest that you guys have to think about, but maybe like a guest that we can just like chill and vibe out with this person, you know? So I thought, why don't we bring on our friend... Mr. Oh Tony Gwynn. Gosh. <laughs> my guy. My Orlando brother. Magic. Orlando Magic. Orlando oh. Magic. Oh. <laughs> wow. Tony Gwynn. My guy. My brother. How are you, man? I'm good, man. I'm I just wanted to say, you know, first of all, before we get into anything, I'm so excited that the you guys made it this far into five years. I remember my literally my second day on the job. We were back in the offices before the pandemic hit, and I was looking up Orlando Magic podcast. And the first show I went on was the Six Man, and I literally, I will be completely honest. I will go on your YouTube and I will show you that I watched every episode <laughs> as a diehard fan of just what? rooting for you guys. And oh just, God. I'm not even kidding. Hold on. We're doing this live, so I wasn't prepared, honestly. <laughs> I'm so shook right now to be, even be on a show with the three of you. Oh, oh, God, I'm honestly, <laughs> I'm honestly shocked. While you're doing so that, while you're doing that Tony, while you're doing that, let's explain. This is Tony Wynn, by the way. For those that don't know, yes. Tony Wynn is part of the Orlando Magic like, social team and like killer photographer. Like He also sets up like a lot of like the the crazy like when we think about like the classics unveiling like that whole photo shoot with like all the throwback stuff tony's part of the team that makes that happen like tony's an incredibly creative guy he loves the magic incredibly loves this talented. fan base very talented and just a genuinely good good guy he's one of our friends here at the show yeah, so anyway in case it's not about me man it's, it's about you guys <laughs> celebrating five years you know yeah, more, yeah. less of me and more of you all right oh, well, okay. check this out literally okay. i don't know if you see That's this crazy. but wow. i watch That's... every show you except the, a lot of sorry, time, man, i don't watch it's, you're, ben, you're, I'm you're sorry, man, I don't watch the post game like stuff, but yeah, all whatever. the podcasts, like literally, I, yeah. guys, oh listen, God. like win or lose, I'm there and Kevin in the chat, just watching, just like the the Western Conference games and all this stuff. Yo, shout out JK, I appreciate you, man. But uh, yeah, man, just like honestly, these five years have been amazing for you guys. I'm so excited to see how you guys grew, and you know, like Jonathan, I was listening to earlier, like during the live podcast about how you mentioned just like how we aligned ourselves perfectly just to like how we manifested all of this, just to all the hard work, all the tears. And I remember my favorite episode was actually seeing Luke cry when they were talking about, uh, you know, good old stand and everyone else in that magic team. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I've never seen this guy so emotional. I love it. It's like, it's so pure about, you know, when you guys say, you know, you know, by fans for fans, that's, you mean it with heart, you mean it with passion. And 
I go into my purpose, purpose every day, into every game day, thinking about you guys and just what you want to see, all the content from behind the scenes to pushing for more things, and whether that's, you know, uh, things that we can't talk about, but, you know, everything that we do, it's it's fully honest. It's all genuine. It's all love. And I do everything with the inspiration of all Magic fans. So I appreciate you guys so much. And you don't know what it means to even me, just as an employee. And I, I would risk even being on this show for you guys. And, and I'm telling you, man, like, when I'm there with Kevin, we lost by 30 or 40 points. I'm like, it's all good. I get to listen to my guy Kevin here, just be positive. And <laughs> then I get to listen to Luke and Jonathan every Thursday and Sunday. I even, like, stay up sometimes that night when the episode's released, and I'm, like, the first five viewers. You know what I mean? Just like, And that's what I listen to before I fall asleep, before I think about what I have going on for the rest of the week. But, yeah, man, I, I you know, I'm just so happy for you guys. I'm so, so happy, especially for the fans. And uh, definitely for sure, man, I just – I don't know what to say other than that, but uh, yeah, I'm happy for you. Especially Carmen. When ep- Shout out to Carmen for sure. <laughs> when an episode is late, Tony is legitimately texting me like, bro, I'm up editing. Where is the pod? So he like, mm-hmm. I like, I know that I've, I've told you Tony and like you and I have had like separate conversations over the years about like just sort of our team and your team's like paralleled growth as the team gets better. But like when I talk to people and I tell people that like one of the greatest things about getting to do this has been the people within the organization that we've gotten the opportunity to meet. And when you know that legitimately good people work for the organization and the team that you root for, it makes you even more proud to to be a fan of that. But just eternally grateful for like everything that you've done for us and like the friendship that we have and the fact that you're on here. Like I'm, I'm legitimately blown away, man. Like, you know, I love you. You know how I feel about you. And just appreciate everything that you guys have done for us and that you guys do every single day for Magic fans everywhere. No, of course, Tony, man. I'm so excited what to be I, here. What I, I can say... No, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, looking at your YouTube and you scrolling through with all the, the red line showing that you've watched basically everything from front to back, Tony is single-handedly helping the, the average viewer duration that I look at on the YouTube Studio <laughs> app. Tony's just holding it down, backpacking it. Yeah, Tony, I, I can't add much more than what Jonathan has already said. Um, you you know that, that we rock with you and that we love you and appreciate the uh, the support as always. And coming on the show, man, it, it, it means a lot to us. I, I genuinely had no idea this was happening, so yeah. that was great. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. So anyway, you're welcome, guys. Tony, thanks for hanging out with us for a little bit. Always, always appreciate you, dude. It's all love. Uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out with us and... Hey, we'll see you here soon and get get ready for some playoff basketball in April. What do you say? That's it. We we're not going to talk about playoffs. You want we're not to talk about what's, what's coming for? The, you I want to be like I'm on the show if it's like a regular Monday night, man. Come on, like we got like a couple more minutes, right? Well, sure, why not? Let's go. What's, what's the conversation like with your team? Just like around like the growth that so many of you have seen around this team. Like, how excited are you all to be able to shoot and create content around like a playoff series? It's so inspiring, man. I go back to that Shaq night when, you know, everything was happening. It felt like opening night, and we knew the season was going to be special after the guys, what they said, like, falling postgame and their postgame or, or, you know, postseason interviews and whatnot, saying playoffs for bus, right? Uh, that's something that we're really thriving off of, and that's inspiring us to keep us going. We know it's a long season. It's crazy to me that we're already, like, 50 games away, like, 27 away, games away from the season ending, and, like, I can't believe it. Uh, I mean, especially when you I'm listening to the six man show like every other night, it makes things easier. You know what I mean? And so uh, it's very inspiring. It's very motivating. I mean, in past the past four, three, three, four seasons I've been here, we never really had to talk about what's going to happen past, you know, April at the end of the season. You know what I mean? Now we get to see it. And Jonathan, I was talking to you about this, even you know through Twitter. It's just like, hey, you see the Google Pixel ad? You saw Jalen Suggs. Can you imagine what that atmosphere was going to be like? And after hearing what Jalen had to say, with talk, after talking with you guys and JT and, you know, even Jay Chapman, it's like everyone's on board. Everyone loves this. Everyone's going to be a part of this process. It's, it's so inspiring to get up behind our guys. And I'm willing to, like, listen to a podcast about, like, I'm not willing. I'm going to do it either way. But I'm going to listen to a podcast with, by you guys talking about the playoffs, like your prediction and all this stuff, who we're going to play against. And I'm going to be making graphics for social and all this stuff, thinking about, what is my going to be my game plan for this? If we win, what are the memes going to look like? What's what's going to be play the song? You know what I mean? Everything goes into factor. I promise you. And uh, we have a great team for that. And uh, just just everything for the city. I mean, I've never been that part of the atmosphere before uh, since I got in here in Orlando because the, when I got here, it was literally 
after DJ Augustine hit the game winner, and then like I come in the off season, or all of a sudden now resigning Vooch, resigning Evan, resigning uh, uh, Off Rook and Aminu. You know what a great guy he is. Uh, <laughs> but then uh, you know after ever since then, <laughs> ever since then the uh, bubble and the whole situation it hasn't felt the same. But man, I, I have a feeling like you know. Playoffs in the yellow is going to be crazy. The watch crazy. party, I'm sure, is going to be great. If you guys do it, uh, man, it's just – I'm excited. Like, if, like I go to – every time I'm sad, I promise you, I go back watching that video when we got number one overall, all three of you guys' faces together. Like, that's the reason why I love what I do and to be the inspiration because of you guys. You know what I mean? It's just to, just to see that all live and then to see it going to be happening again but even for further for years and years to come, when we're going to talk about that parade on Church Street, mm. me popping champagne, going crazy with the like come the on, goggles, you know what I mean? Yes, come on, sir. come on, man! Camera in hand, but yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a camera in hand, champagne, one bottle. It's going to be crazy. So I'm very excited for that day to come, man. Just, I hope your kids, your guys, all your guys' kids, never have to go through what we're all currently going through as fans right now, but. <laughs> The future is bright. That's all I'll say. The future is bright. So yeah, hundred percent, dude. Yeah, that, I'll, felt good. that felt good to say. Like that's I, that's what it, it felt, felt like good to hear. Kevin on the show. You know what I mean? That's right. That's right. I'm always that's preaching awesome. positivity. You know, but yeah, this is dude. My favorite I, podcast episode we've ever done. Now, <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. That's amazing. I say one last question, Tony. One last question for you. You've got us all excited. I am curious though. The last couple of weeks have been crazy for you guys. Like you had fifty in the building. That one day, two days, whatever it was, Shaq's jersey retirement. Obviously, some of your team went like to All Star Weekend. How insane has it been? How much fun has it been? But also, how like insane or surreal has some of this been? Like the last two weeks have been kind of crazy. Yeah, just I think it's just another day in the office. That's you know every day is different. Oh yeah, fifty walks in, just another day, whatever, Tony. (laughs) No, but 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 honestly, I'm 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 from St. Louis, and Nelly's my guy. That's who I grew up with. So seeing fifty was surreal at the moment, but after talking to him, he's of such course. a genuine sweet guy and it's good to know and but i think overall the 35th season it hit me that like oh my gosh this is the year that we're gonna have the classics all the stuff that we're doing from a launch standpoint and all these amazing installations and all these legends that are coming by even seeing penny and dick anderson together from shack and everything that was surreal that was uh crazy to me and i just think being part of that just was just like a like a, like a like oh my gosh moment you know what i mean and like but now that's over with. Like I gotta move on to the, the tomorrow because we gotta get the Cavs, and then we gotta start thinking playoffs. I'm in. I'm in the mindset for playoffs right now. Like I gotta yeah. start preparing about what I'm gonna do. Like from my office to my shoes, to about what I'm gonna wear, to like <laughs> what I'm gonna eat that day. Superstitious and like all these little things that I'm thinking about constantly in my head. That's that's what's I'm going on. But I couldn't be more excited every day. I get to go to the, you know, the Avon Health Training Facility, to see these guys lock in and like have fun with it and. You know, I've listened to that Jalen podcast, man. He's been so genuine, so honest about it, and like a lot everything that he has going on for him. It's so, it's so great to see the work that he's been putting in this summer really come to life, and for him to show it on the court. And I think when I'm sitting there on the on, on like the court side right there by the bench, and like he's pumping up the crowd. As much as I want to shoot it all, I also want to cheer. You know what I mean? <laughs> I want to go crazy. Like I want to go like take off my shirt, look crazy. You know what I mean? Like yeah. after a five game win streak. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's how i feel sometimes but uh yeah man i'm very passionate about it just as much as you guys and you guys really are the engine to that so i appreciate all you do and you again congrats for yeah. five years well i know we're you know here celebrating the show but i just want everybody listening and, and viewing right now and maybe listening or viewing later on just to like understand how lucky we are to have the social media team that we do and just we've come a long way with oh. Orlando magic social media <laughs> and I hope you Drop hear dimes. Tony talking. <laughs> exactly. I hope you understand, you know, from Tony and their entire team, like how much a labor of love it really is. And I hope you all, you know, be nice to your admins. That's that's kind of what I'll say. And and yes. Tony, can't thank you enough for being here, man. This is awesome. Thanks, Tony. Uh, I appreciate, appreciate you, you bro. Yeah. Thank we'll you talk guys. soon. I appreciate you. All right. Love you, yep. dude. See you. And be sure to be on the lookout for the Quinn Man Show coming uh, to a, a podcast <laughs> Wait. platform soon. <laughs> Hey, while we're here, um, let's let's give two tickets away to the Warriors game in March. We'll, you want to? You guys oh can gosh. figure out the situation, but yeah, let's, let's just do it. Let's do it. All right. Hey, wait, wait. Well, on top of that, on top of that, gosh. five years for the show. Let's get let's give away a classic Ben Carroll jersey. Why not? Ooh, Why number I'm five. Gosh, Tony Quinn. Number oh. five. Number five. Grief. Okay. Number five, right here. 
Okay. Let's go. Come on. Wow. Do you Why want to do it like right now in the chat? Like just let's go right now in the, chat. Later. in the chat. In the chat <laughs> oh right okay. now. Okay. Let's, let's go see. crazy. Five how years, guys. I've, how Come I've on. done this in the past is I've picked a number between one and however many are in the chat. Like we could do that. You, is that what you want to do? You want to do that? I don't care. Some, you don't some care? fans are gonna be lucky that they All get right, to listen, see the Warriors. Listen, listen. They get the Bankero jersey. Why not? You know, are All we right, giving listen. these together? Like, are they? Are we giving these away together or separate? We'll do the jersey now. And then we'll figure out mm-hmm. we'll figure out the other thing later. Is that fine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all live. Yeah, this is happening yeah, yeah. live. Okay. Moment. Okay. Why We're not? giving away the it's jersey right now. A P five classic jersey. There are eighty eight people in the chat right now. Pick a number between one and eighty eight. Go right now. First number that I see that I, I have it in my head. I will tell you what it is. We'll give away the tickets later. Number one through eighty eight. I have the number in my head. Let's see it. Come on, chat. Come on, chat. While this is going on. Oh, 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 there they come. Oh, I always forget there's a delay. There's a delay. Let's see. Da, 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 da. I don't see it yet. I don't see it yet. It might be the person who gets closest. This game um, can go on for a bit. It could. That's oh, possible. someone was really close. Someone was really close. <laughs> I'm going to give it about 15 more seconds. Well, I'm going to have to search and make sure I don't miss it because a lot, there was a ton right there. This is how we do things Tony. around here. This is you this is this is great listen. podcast listening right here for those of you that are listening to this later. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna give it ten more seconds. I still don't see it. Oh, there it is. B Dill seventy seven. B Dill seventy seven. Congrats, congrats. So B Dill, what I need you to do, I need you to take a screenshot of your YouTube account to verify that it's you, and DM us either on uh, Twitter or Instagram that screenshot to confirm it's you. Then we'll get your. Uh, your address and all that kind of stuff, your size and all that stuff. We'll get you that P5 jersey. Tony, that was so nice of you. Wow. Oh, man. Thank on. you so much. We will give away the those goat. Warriors tickets later. Obviously, that's not till like March 20-something. So we'll find a time. We'll give those away. All right? Good wow. deal. All right, Tony, Tony thanks uh, for Kevin, hanging with us, Kevin, bro. I'll see you tomorrow. Tony, on the, thank you, brother. For sure. My last thing. I'll see you tomorrow. Yes. Kevin, on, tomorrow on the podcast when, you know, when the intro goes, let's go, man. Uh-huh. Dude. You like that? That's like... <laughs> Man, I love that. It gives me goosebumps. It's pretty good. I I listen to the song, man. I I feel it. I feel it, man. I'm there. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good deal. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Tony. All right, brother. We appreciate it, bro. Thank you. Yep. See you. A little surprise for you there. I had a feeling there was going to be something, but it was like very fleeting earlier today. And that was Uh just, that was incredible. Really quick before I get your reactions, we have had several super chats come in during that. First off, Lourdes Zari says, Glad to see you got the magic board I made. Yes. This magic board right here. Right over my shoulder. Shout out. I got that. Got the coaster. Shout out to that. Always appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for that. Matt says, Tony with the instant chemistry with a six-man crew. You should be the fourth six-man. Oh, look at that. That's not a bad idea. Tony's the man. And then Junior Baru says, congrats, fellas. Go Magic. Thank you guys so much for all those very generous super chats. Always, always appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you, um, Kevin. Yeah, that was awesome. Go ahead, Luke. Nah, I was just going to say thanks, Kevin. Appreciated that. That's well, surprise. good to to talk with the old uh Quinn man, but uh, I'm glad glad we got to do it live on the show. Absolutely. That was a lot of fun. Well, I don't know what else to say. I know we're we're actually, celebrating the actually, sorry. There's one more. Oh no. One more surprise. No way. Goodness yeah. Gracious. There's one more surprise. Sorry. Um <laughs> I think you should just sit back, relax, and let's let's take a look at this video. I was driving home with my wife one night. I had just finished listening to an episode of, uh, I don't know if you, I don't know if it was Locked On Magic at the time. It was Philip Rossman, right? I think he was Locked On Magic at that point. And I said, man, I wish I had another Magic podcast to listen to. And my wife said, why don't you start a podcast? And I was like, I would never do that. And the more I thought about it, I was like, why don't I do that? At least try it out.
Jonathan, congrats. Five years doing the Six Man Show. Appreciate uh, all the content you've given us. Don't tell Luke I said this, but it wouldn't be the same without you. Uh, here's to another five years and go Magic. To Jonathan and the Six Man crew, I want to say congratulations on five years of the Six Man Show. You guys have brought so much fun and joy to Magic fans. You're invaluable to everyone in the Magic community. Congratulations, Jonathan. Five-year anniversary of the Six Man Show. Yes, you guys got the best Orlando Magic basketball content out there. Shout out to you guys, man. So inspirational. Shout out to the pod. Shout out to the Magic. Congratulations on y'all five years. Blessing to y'all. My guy, Jonathan, congratulations. Five years. It's hard to do that for, for a good amount of time like that. Only Magic Podcast worth watching. Keep going, King. Shout out to y'all, man. Five years, Jonathan. That's a big accomplishment. But it's like it's like a Tatum five years you, where no, they're, you're right. you know, it's only five years in the league, but the future, that, that's the it's best so part. It's He's so bright. Bright. I mentioned Tatum in this, man. Shout out to y'all, man. Yo, 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 yo. What's up? This is Andrew from Jam Hot Chicken. Congratulations to Jonathan and the whole six-man show, Kevin Luke. Everyone else involved. Happy anniversary. Five years is amazing. We love you guys. We love the magic. Again, happy five years, y'all. Yo, Jonathan, what up, man? Want to send you some love on five years for the six man show. As somebody that's in this podcast space, I know how hard it is, all the hard work, the sacrifices, the long nights. So I just want to tell you enjoy it, embrace it, celebrate. And then it's right back to the ground to elevate and keep pushing. But yeah, bro, much love, John. Enjoy your day. And you already know what it is, man. Oh, Eddie. Eddie House. Five years. Five years of late nights and early mornings and long drives to and from Orlando. Five years of laughs, five years of growth, five years of doing what five years ago would have seemed as impossible. I want you to know how proud I am of you and how thankful I am to have a husband that finds balance in the craziness that is life and work in the podcast and how thankful I am that my children will grow up knowing that their daddy never gave up on his dreams. We love you so much and we're so proud of you. Kevin Tucker, I am gonna, I'm gonna kill you. What? Well, you cannot do this to me in front of. I don't. God knows how many people are gonna see this. Oh my gosh. Dude. Oh, dude. Love you, bro. Oh, I love Sheesh. you, man. Seriously, like, obviously, like, we never take this for granted, right? Like, this is the the greatest thing I think that you know each of us would agree that you know we've ever done outside of you know stuff with our family and everything like that. But like, you know. It's a it's a labor of love. Like yeah, that is the best way to describe this, and like just getting to you know look at that you know at, like from where we started to where we are now, and just like all those faces that we've we've gotten to know in the relationships that we've been able to to make. Man, it's just like it's incredible. This is the all, best thing that I've ever done, and you know just so grateful that I get to do it with two of my best friends and uh, just our our community. Like it just makes this the best thing ever and i i just love it so much and i hope we get to do it forever i'll, I'll be honest i knew that the carmen osborne video was was coming but coming into tonight i forgot momentarily that it was coming because he cut from the congrats <laughs> clips that we collected that was and then crying bro he came back into it and uh wow yeah so shout out to carmen for filming that for us and shout out to everybody that uh, sent clips in. We, Kevin and I, were were reaching out, making it happen. And uh, man, shout out to Kevin for putting it all Kevin's together. Kevin's crying. I, Kevin knew. Oh yeah, totally. dude, I've Kevin's watched this seen. seventeen times. <laughs> I I got emotional most of the time, and then watching you lose it, I'm done. Forget this, man. <laughs> Good grief. Uh, uh, but seriously, just, like these, yeah. what I've I've said this on the show several times that. I joined the show thinking we'd just talk about the magic, and then I ended up making some brothers out of it, and so it's kind of crazy. Yeah, but uh, so it anyway, really is. yeah, several, like several, like not just yeah. you guys, but like we have like our whole six man show, like all hands chat, and yeah, just like we we've like this is just grown and like has has branched out and just done so much more than I ever thought would be possible, and 
like to my to my wife like who I'm going to go into the room and and you know yell at for doing this to me in front of a bunch of people <laughs> but like it it legitimately like I never would have had the idea and had the courage to do it without her and like I literally could not do this on a daily basis without her like our our family would fall apart if it wasn't for my wife and everything that that she does and like people I think underestimate you know just the the how much it takes to do what we do on a daily basis and especially recording twice a week and doing the post game lives like I tell people all the time it would not be possible without Luke and Kevin and you know I know we had the whole conversation with Jalen Suggs but like I genuinely believe that God has placed all these people in my life um, that has helped us to do what we do on a daily basis and just has placed like freaking Pee Wee to plug Drew Gooden <laughs> like the, our, our guys from pick aside Philip Rossman Reich like the again the I keep coming back to the relationships that we've built um, you know the three of us like it's been my favorite part of all of this and something crazy could happen and this all could end tomorrow and I would still take all of that uh, with me for the rest of my life so yep. I love you guys I love all of the listeners I don't I don't have anything else I I got one more just because I it, oh it feels my gosh necessary. dude I cannot I cannot take anything else. Um no I'm not no 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 this not is a surprise. A surprise. This is oh, just thank God. God. <laughs> yeah no, Jonathan's scarred he's got PTSD from it but uh, no I just I wanted to um, shout out to my wife as well just because it, listen like for tonight for instance like I serve in the high school student ministry at church and that's on Wednesday nights. And so I, I come home, I've pushed back recording time to make that happen typically. Um, now that, cause it's really been on my heart to do it, but during those days, like my wife is doing everything, you know? So, um, <laughs> Oh, it got Luke. Yep. <laughs> Dude, so, like, uh, thank you for just, that comment. Cause that snapped me out of it, but I um, saved you. You're yeah, welcome. Man, she just <laughs> watching the kids and taking care of them and, and letting us, do stuff like this uh, is is mind boggling to me that someone would do that for me. So, um, shout out to her. I had <laughs> Real MVPs, it's, it's awesome. the yep, wives it's of true. the six man show. It's true, like truly. So, there is uh, one. I'm just kidding. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. No more surprises. <laughs> Thank God. No more well, surprises. We I are supposed to. Take we right are now. supposed to end this with the week ahead. We said we were going to end this with the week ahead. Oh, so if you want to, if you want to steer the ship back, we Undefeated, can talk about the, the games this week. Undefeated three and zero. We're 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 beating Cleveland. We're beating Detroit. We're beating Atlanta. Not a not a negative thought can enter my mind right now. We're going. Mm -hmm. We're we're going twenty seven and zero over the final stretch. The rest there, of the so. way, yeah. I will also Plus say five years and zero. So what is that? Forty three and zero. Rest of the way. Yeah. The title. Five-year history of the show. We are setting a record tonight for the longest show in the history of our show. So look at that. Over 90 Fitting. minutes. Going to be pushing 100 minutes. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Awesome. All right. I think that's going to do it. I, I genuinely, I'm spent. Um, thank you guys so much. For producer Kevin Tucker, thank you for putting all this together. I love you, man. Luke Sylvia, couldn't do it this without you. I love you, man. To our listeners, to our viewers, our followers, we love you. We could not, it would be pointless to do this without any of you. Um, this has been Jonathan Osborne. You all have been listening to The Six Man Show. We will catch you guys next time. See ya. Thanks for listening to The Sixth Man Show. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and Spotify to get new episodes downloaded directly to your phone. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to give us a five-star rating and a review. It helps out the show a lot. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sixth Man Show. We'll catch you guys next time. Go Magic!